Hello there and welcome. My name is David and today we will be looking at this floating sphere example. So first we're going to the top there and we're going to set up our macros. So the macro we're going to be using today is the designsphysics.py macro. So we'll just execute that like that. And we'll just go and check our setup plugin window. Um, so if you just have a quick look through there and make sure that everything you have is the same. Um, but you may have a different version of PowerView, so don't worry too much about that one. And we're ready to set up our new case. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our case limits. So if first we position the case limits with minus 2000x, minus 2000y, and minus 50 millimeters in Z. And if we just then define the size of the domain, we're going to have a length of 4,000 millimeters, a width of 4,000 millimeters, and a height of 5,000 millimeters. And then we're just going to position that in view by clicking the button in the top left there. Next, <clears throat> we're going to create our geometry. So we're going to click the yellow box on the top there. I'm going to rename this bottom as it forms the base of our domain. And again, we're going to position this. This time it's going to be minus 1500x, minus 1500y, and 0 in z. And again, we're going to define the size. So a length of 3000 millimeters, a width of 3000 millimeters and a height of one millimeter. Next comes our sphere. So if we click the sphere in the top there, I'm going to leave this named sphere. So again, go to position. We're going to have zero X, zero Y, and 1000 Z. We just scroll down here. Oh, we'll not change our Z position though. Change that back to 1000. We're going to give our sphere a radius of 500 millimeters. And finally, we're going to define our fluid region. So we're going to create another cube and we're going to position this at minus 1500x, minus 1500y, and again 0 and z. And we're going to name this water. And again we'll define the size of our box. So we'll have a length of 3000 millimeters, a width of 3000 millimeters, and a height of 2000 millimeters. And if we just change the viewing settings and we'll give this a transparency of 50% so it has no effect on the properties of the cube, it just allows us to see that the sphere is still there and it's still a completely separate entity within the geometry. So we're now ready to add all of these individual parts to the simulation. So we click the Add to DSPH simulation button there and we're going to have Type of Object, Bound, NK Bound 0 and Fill Mode, Full. So we'll now go to the sphere Add that to DSPH simulation, type of object bound, MK bound 1, fill mode full, but this time we're going to configure our float state. So we're going to set floating to true, and we're going to give the sphere a density of 500. And finally, we have our fluid region named water. Again, add to simulation, and this time type of object we're going to set as fluid. And there we have that. So on the right hand side here, you can see all of these parts are ordered. Now it's important that these parts are in the right order as that's the order that the individual parts appear within the code and therefore the order that the particles are generated. You can adjust the order by clicking the arrows on the right and we're looking for this order here where we have water, then bottom, and then sphere. We're now ready to change the simulation to 2D with Y position of zero. And now we're going to set up 
our constants. So we're going to leave most of this as default, but we're going to change the coefficient of h to 1.2. And now we're going to move on to the execution parameters, just at the top there. So we're going to use double precision. We're going to use the symplectic step algorithm. We're going to enable delta SPH and leave the delta SPH value as 0.1. Time of our simulation is going to be 6 seconds with a timeout data of 0.02 and we're going to enable x periodicity and we're going to leave the y and z increments at 0. Finally, we'll change the interparticle distance to 0.025 and we're ready to save and run the gen case as you can see there. So if we choose a suitable place to save this, we're going to save it in this folder here, and we're going to create a new folder for it to contain all the different parts of the simulation. So if we name that floating sphere, there we have that. So we're now going to go into power view quickly. So I'll open a power view, and we're going to open one of the folder, one of the files, sorry, that's just been created. So we're going to go to the floating sphere file that we've just made, and we're going to go to the floating sphere out folder, and in there you have floating sphere all PTK. So if we just show that, and we're going to position it with Y plus like so, and we'll get that to come back quickly. So what we have here is you can see the starting position of all the particles within the simulation. So this is our input. Now that we've seen all that's okay, we can go back and we'll just have a look very quickly at the other file, the other files that were created when we saved and ran the gen case. So we just go to this folder. You can see here. These files here, these are our save files. So the case data .dsph data file is the file you will open if you're loading the case. And here you can see some of the other files created in the out part, including that floating sphere or VTK file we just looked at. And we're now ready to start looking at running the simulation. So there's a couple of options here. We can run this using the CPU or the GPU. It's recommended the GPU is used. It's far, far quicker. Um, however, there's no difference in results if you use the CPU like we will be doing here. So here, we can see the simulation running. This has been sped up enormously, so don't worry too much if yours is a bit slower. On the left, we can see the log where we can see the individual particles being calculated. And on the right, we can see that they're being output into the floating sphere out folder. That's that done there. So we're now ready to start looking at post-processing this. So we're going to click on part VTK and we're going to save the fluid part of this simulation. So we're going to tick the fluid box and we'll name this fluid part and export that. And we're going to do the same again, except this time we're going to save the floating part. So we'll export the floating part of the simulation for visualization. And once that's done, we're going to go back into Power View and we'll clear the input. And we're going to open up the two parts we've just saved. So we're going to open the floating part VTK and the fluid part VTK. So again, we'll click Apply, position that with Y+, plus, and we'll just this time visualize it by viewing the particles colored by velocity. And then we just click Play, and there we have our floating sphere simulation fully visualized. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you have any questions about the simulation, then please go to either the Jules Physics Forum 
or alternatively you can email us at jawsphysics at gmail.com.